Hey, Ryan, welcome back to the show. As a way of getting started, give us a little update. Yeah, it's been great. It's been a year since I've been on, so thanks for having me on again. It's been a wild year. I've my book is now about to come out. When we spoke last time, my I don't even think my book had been picked up yet by my publisher. And so I had written most of it. I was working on the editing, got picked up by my publisher, and it seemed like it's been forever in the making. The book still currently is not out yet. It comes out May 5th, but the ebook and audio book are available. And so it's, as it's been getting in the hands of people, it's been really exciting to get some, some rather positive feedback about how the book is positively influencing people's lives. And that's it. And what I've noticed, because I started a series on the best salespeople out there, and I did an internet uh, post about it, got a bunch of people. I probably interviewed 50 uh, people making well over seven figures. Wow. Right? And, and when we last talked, you know, the elements of the outward mindset, uh, curiosity, interest, and empathy, comes up over and over again. But the, the, the challenge is not knowing them. The challenge is, is developing those skills. Yes. You know, and I've tried to have experts on empathics, but they, they said, give me a year. And I'm like, you're really that busy? It's a half hour, I'm gonna sell uh -huh. your book. <laughs> now, I'm glad you put a book out. And I think we talked about it last time. What was the, the motive for doing that? I guess as a professor, it's one of the elements of uh, your well, lifestyle. <laughs> well, no, it's really to your point is in that mindsets are really the foundation of everything that we do and how successful we can be. And in all honesty, I wrote about this one because I was interested in developing myself. And I discovered in my journey that I didn't necessarily have the most positive mindsets and that my mindsets were actually preventing my success. And so in the instances where my career or even challenges within my family, when I was having obstacles, in those moments, I had a tendency to blame others or blame my circumstances. And I was unable to see that actually what was the problem was myself and my mindsets that while I thought I saw the world in the best way, which led me to think and behave in certain ways, um, and I could justify that thinking and behavior because of my mindsets, it didn't necessarily mean that I had the most positive mindsets. And so ultimately, what I've learned in my own personal journey is that if I could get out of my own way and improve my mindsets, I'm gonna unlock greater success. And I think that's the case for everybody. Now, did you start at a certain level and do you see a compounding effect of like, if you change like this one thing, but like I, I see is forgiveness is like number one for me, starts with forgiving myself, but forgiving others, which gets the garbage out of my head. Yes, so our, I focus on four different sets of mindsets. And each of these sets has a, a negative side and a positive side. And our mindsets fall somewhere along this continuum. And I've got a free mindset assessment that people can take. And it's on my website if anybody's interested. But what I've, I've had about 10,000 people take it now. And one of the things that I found really interesting is that I thought that there would be correlations between the different positive mindsets, such as if I'm high on one, am I likely to be high on the others? And what I've actually found is that no, they're not very correlated, which suggests that these are very distinct and different mindsets and that all of them matter in terms of unlocking our success. And so that's been one, one of the big takeaways. And so when I look at myself um, and, and kind of my professional career, one of the mindsets that was really limiting me was what is called a prevention mindset. And a prevention mindset is when we're trying not to lose. And the opposite mindset is a promotion mindset, when we're trying to win. And so when I had this prevention mindset, it was really easy to justify. Because at the end of the day, I wanted to avoid problems. I wanted to make sure that I was safe. I wasn't taking risks. And so when a storm would come on the horizon, naturally, I would just run from the storm. But that actually was taking away, me away from the goals that I wanted to accomplish. 
And, and it was during this time when I started to dive into mindsets is I had a business owner that gave me a book and the book is called the five minute journal. And he hands it to me. He says, this is going to change your life. And I said, you're out of your mind. I mean, in my own mind, I'm thinking there's no way I'm journaling. I'm not a journaler. And so, but it outwardly, I'm, oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. I love books. Uh, but I brought it home and it invites you to answer three questions in the morning and two questions at night. So three things you're grateful for. What would make today great? Or three things that would make today great. Some self-affirmations. And then at the end of the day, what are three amazing things that happened today? And how could I have made today even better? And as I started to do this, I kind of gave myself, I'll do this for two weeks just to make him happy. And as I started to do it, what this was for me was it was, it was cre exercising my positive mindset neural connections on a daily basis. And I felt the shift from being, instead of being concerned about avoiding problems and, and ensuring my safety, I became much more focused on the goals that I wanted to accomplish. And, and that made all the difference for me. I mean, without making that shift, I would have never written my book. We would have never had this phone call. Uh, I would have never started up my own business. Um, and, and so that's been, that's an example of where if we could isolate specific mindsets that we need to improve, use some tools to help us to strengthen our positive mindset neural connections then we could start to unlock much better thinking, learning, behavior, and consequently our success. And that's it. And even my amateur re neuroscience research as a sales guy is that we're working with the wrong part of the brain most of the time. We're working with the prefrontal cortex, the logical brain. But all this stuff is in our subconscious primitive brain, right? We got to train that monkey, that yeah. reptile. You're so right, because our mindsets, what they are is our mental lenses that shape how we view the world. And, and I love that you're, you're directing me into the neuroscience because that's been one of my biggest learnings this last year. And, and so let me tell you a little bit about what I've learned. So our, our mindsets, they aren't physical lenses, right? right? But what they are actually, is, and they do reside in our prefrontal cortex, but you're right, they, they generally operate on a non-conscious level. So if we use this prevention versus promotion mindsets as an example, we all have a prevention mindset neural connection and we all have a promotion mindset neural connection. Now, which one we use and when we look out at the world or the situations we encounter is based upon which one is stronger. So if one is stronger than the other, it's gonna fire louder and quicker. If the other, and then the other one is just gonna be slower and softer. And so as our senses send information into our brain, it's the stronger neural connections that filters that information down. So we identify select things about that situation, and then we interpret it in unique ways based upon that neural connection. And so when we understand this, now the how we improve our mindsets becomes really clear is we just need to strengthen our positive mindset neural connections. Does that make sense? It, it, it does. And what I also learned is we have, we think of something and then we get a feeling. And I've kind of come to this conclusion that we don't think, we react. And we see this today, right? Yeah. We're not thinking, we're reacting, <laughs> right? So, and that mindset of, in, in sales we call it, are you more motivated by winning or avoiding losing. I love it. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And the thing that's to piggyback off of what you said about the reacting is if we've got that prevention mindset lens, then we're naturally going to just try to avoid problems, avoid difficulties, and and our gut feel, our intuition is going to say when problems occur or the waves start rocking that we run for safety and and that's our intuition that feels good to us somebody that has a promotion mindset will encounter that same situation and their intuition will tell them something completely different and, and again we could justify away either side of this but the reality is is so the idea of going with your gut 
is only a good idea if you have the positive mindsets. Otherwise, it's going to limit you. And, and we have to condition that subconscious because we're getting a feeling, right? Someone cuts us off in traffic, right? If we're thinking, who cares? We're, we're going to still get there on time. You know, that person didn't get up in the morning and say, I'm going to go cut off Ryan, right? Yeah. But how do we react? That person is threatening our social position on that highway. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's, and this comes into the idea, uh, I know you focus a lot with sales reps, but also sales leaders. And sales leaders really shape the culture and the mindsets of their reps below them. And so it's really critical that sales leaders understand the power of mindsets. And let me give you a, an example of this. This isn't necessarily a sales example, but I think the ideas resonate. So um, are you a football fan at all? Oh, passive, yeah. Okay, somewhat like me. Uh, so Tom Coughlin is the former head coach of the New York Giants. So he was pretty successful. He won two Super Bowls uh, when he was with the Giants. And upon leaving the Giants, he took a position as the president of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the Jacksonville Jaguars have historically been a pretty subpar team. And so I think we've got to imagine that here's Tom Coughlin going into this new position thinking, I want to have a positive influence on this team. I want to leave a lasting legacy for both this team and also for myself. And so I got to imagine that he's got to have really positive intentions. But what was interesting, and during this last football season, it was his third year with the Jacksonville Jaguars, the NFL Players Association came out with a report that said, while the Jacksonville Jaguar players make up about 3% of the NFL, because there's about 32 teams, 25% of all player complaints came from the Jacksonville Jaguars, tied back to Tom Coughlin's policies that he had implemented. So here's a situation where he's saying, I want, I want to have a positive effect. I'm doing the best that I can. But he's got mindsets that are causing him to make decisions that at the end of the day are devastating for the team. I mean, the NFL Players Association came out and said, we cannot recommend that our players play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So promptly, the owner fired him and got him out of there so that they can attract free agents during the offseason. And so the same thing goes, I think, in all organizations is that I don't know a leader who goes to work and says, I want to damage my employee's self-esteem. But 60% of employees are saying that their leader damages their self-esteem. And, and so, and I think that the reason is because leaders are trying their best, but if their my underlying mindsets aren't positive, they will be inclined to engage in behaviors that they think are best for them but are actually detrimental for those around them. And so you believe clearly that the positive mindset would be is much more constructive than avoiding a bad thing. Yeah, that's one of the things. So in my book, I focus on these four sets of mindsets, not because there aren't other mindset sets to focus on, because you know there's mindsets that are out there like deficit versus abundance mindset, which I think have a lot of... Uh, good ideas uh, associated with them. There's finite versus infinite thinking. Simon Sinek's new book talks about that. So those are great mindsets. The problem is, is there's not 30 plus years of research that backs Any of the it. importance of those mindsets and actually validating them. So the four sets of mindsets that I focus on each have about 30 years of either research or practical backing behind them that's promoting that there is a positive mindset and there is a negative mindset. And the more that we can shift to the positive, the more we're going to unlock greater success. For us. Okay. Well, what's number two? So we talked about prevention versus promotion. Uh, th there's fixed versus growth mindsets. So fixed mindset is, I don't believe I could change my talents, abilities, and intelligence. We kind of are who we are and there's nothing you can do about it. But those with the growth mindset believe that they could change their talents, abilities, and intelligence. And the, the primary finding in the last 30 years of research on these mindsets suggests that if we believe that we can improve, we are going to approach challenges and failures because we see them as the most, perhaps the best way to learn, grow, and develop. Whereas those with a fixed mindset 
because they don't believe that they can improve, whenever they fail, they're inclined to internalize that as though they are failures. And so they run from challenges and failure because they see them as being um, catastrophic to really their personal image. And, and so those with the growth approach challenges, those with fixed are inclined to avoid challenges. Now, now I see that a lot in sales because I'll hear, oh, I'm not funny. I'm not outgoing. I'm not curious. I'm not empathetic. And it's like, okay, I'm not arguing with you. Would you like to become those things? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> And so that's their fixed mindset talking, saying, I can't do anything about this, right? Yeah, but you can. You believe you can. Oh, for sure. I mean, all the research says, all the latest research on neuroplasticity says the things that we didn't think that we could change 10 years ago are things that we could change, like our intelligence. Yes. And that's it. That's why I hate IQ tests. Because I look at it and it's like, well... You know, somebody had experience with those blocks and the squares and the stuff, and some people didn't, mm -hmm. right? And don't you think you, a year later you could learn how to do that? Oh, yeah. In fact, I was reading an article just the other day that was really fascinating, and it was talking about mental maturity. So we used to, kind of the common statement is our brains mature when we're about 25 to 30. And, and once they're matured, you're kind of stuck with what you have. And that's that fixed mindset mentality. But what we're finding is that regardless of our age, we can mat mature in our thinking. And I think we all understand that. And one of the primary ways that they demonstrated this through research was that oftentimes those who are a little bit younger had a tendency when they were presented with two conflicting ideas to either avoid those ideas or jump to one or the other. Whereas those that are more cognitively mature are able to sit with both of those, those conflicting ideas and understand the values and cons associated with each perspective and not necessarily rush to judgment. They're okay sitting in that ambiguity. And, and so one of the ways that we can tell how mature is our, is our thinking is what's our ability to sit with conflicting ideas as opposed to rushing to judgment? Yeah. And the way do we, we change? I heard like the five minute journal, it's short, palatable actions done consistently with a positive emotion. Perfect, you're <laughs> right on. And one of the things that I've developed since we last talked is what's called a digital mindset coach. Uh, so you can find it on my website, but it's, you either get a notification through your email or a notification through your phone, on your phone through an app uh, about three times a week. And it invites you to engage in three, ex one of three exercises, uh, usually a short video, uh, a short writing exercise, and or just a question. And all of these are just designed to activate and strengthen our more positive mindset neural connections. So it's about 10 minutes a day, three days a week. And then the coach lasts for about three to four months. And so if you get a question right, it'll pop up a month later. If you get a question wrong, it'll pop up two weeks later. And you have to get it right twice before you retire that video or that exercise or, or the question. And so over the course of three or four months, it's designed to to essentially be these small interventions that exercise our positive mindset neural connections uh, so that we come to rely upon them essentially automatically in our processing. And us getting in our own way is really our subconscious mind that protects us right here, right now. It doesn't think about tomorrow, next week, next quarter. Right? It's just trying to keep us alive. And you're so right. And one of the things that I found uh, is that when we don't feel safe, we're inclined to have these negative mindsets. And so um, let me give you four desires. Okay. And we could even think, what do, do sales reps or sales leaders commonly have these desires? The first desire is a desire to look good, a desire to be right, 
a desire to avoid problems and the desire to get ahead. Does that sound like a sales rep, to, a stereotypical sales rep? Yeah, it's all good. So, so we're inclined, we could justify these, right? Because who wants to look bad, be wrong, have problems and get passed up? Well, nobody does. <laughs> but the problem with these desires is they're actually connected to the negative mindset. Yeah. And the reason why these are negative desires is because where's the focus? It's Me. on ourselves. Yeah. As opposed to creating something better for maybe our organization or for others, our customers. And so let me give you the, on the opposite side of the continuum, the four positive desires to have. And they're just higher order desires. Uh, and they are, instead of a desire to look good, a desire to learn and grow. That's the growth mindset. Instead of a desire to be right, we have a desire to learn, or sorry, sorry, we have a desire to think optimally and find truth. And so that's an open mindset. Instead of a desire to avoid problems, we have a desire to reach goals. That's the promotion mindset. And then instead of a desire to get ahead, we have a desire to lift others. And that's an outward mindset. Yeah. And so as we focus on learning and growth, thinking optimally, reaching goals and lifting others, we are now in organization advance mode as opposed to self-protection mode. And how do you go about teaching this to your clients? What, so I have my mindset assessment that I talked about. And usually what I'll do is prior to working with a client, I'll have a group of leaders, a group of sales reps, take the mindset assessment in advance. And then what I'll do prior to doing a training is I'll aggregate those results up to the collective level. And then I'll, during the training, we'll walk through the importance and the power of mindsets, walk through these different mindsets that we've been talking about. And then once we understand them, I'll present these collective mindset results and say, as a group, what does this say about us? What does this say about our culture? What does this say about our ability to attract and retain top talent? And what does this say about the quality of our leaders? And it really leads to some really deep conversations about our broader culture, about the broader leadership. And let me give you an example of a sales company that I worked with. Uh, so we, I did this with the sales company and perhaps not surprisingly, they had a really strong promotion mindset. In fact, out of about the 50 organizations or groups that I've worked with, they had the strongest promotion mindset that I've ever seen, right? They had clear goals. They had clear objectives. They knew where they were going. They, they were struggled with the, they had a little bit more of the fixed mindset. So about 55% of the, of the sales reps had a fixed mindset, which means that they were going to avoid challenges. They were limited in their learning. About that same percent had more of a closed mindset. So they kind of felt, oh, I know what, what I know is best. And so they want to be seen as the expert as opposed to trying to find truth and think optimally at, at the end of the day. But then where they were really limited is something that you brought up earlier, was they didn't have an outward mindset. Almost uh, two thirds to three fourths of them had what's called an inward mindset. So they, they saw themselves as being more important than others. And one of the big takeaways from this when we saw this position with a really strong promotion mindset and then a pretty strong inward mindset is at the end of the day, what was being communicated to them and what they were espousing is we care more about the numbers than we do the people. And that led then to the discussion, what does this mean for our, the viability of our business in the long run? Yeah. Are we going to be agile? Are we going to be able, are we going to grow our business if this continues? Or are we going to shrink? So they know, they knew that if they sent out 20,000 mail mailers, they would get X number of clients. They've got it down to an art. But at the end of the day, if you're a sales rep and you send out a mailer, they book a time for you to meet with them, you go to them and you have this inward mindset. Well, a certain amount are going to go with you. We know that. But what if we were to shift to have more of an outward mindset? What would be the percentage of increases in the sales that we would have 
because we don't, we're not seeing them as a number. Instead, we're seeing them as a person, a valuable partner. Yeah. And that's what I, I've seen in sales throughout my career. And it, the, you know, the Dunning-Kruger effect? Yes. Okay. And this typically happens to salespeople between three to seven years. They have success. They attribute a hundred percent of it to themselves and they don't grow from that point forward. And if they don't have success, it's something else's fault other than them. And they feel that they're so good at it. They don't need to learn anymore. And it's just, and I call that the B player trap. Mm -hmm. But then five years later, they wake up and they're in a C-level job that's really hard to be successful at, and they don't understand why. Yeah, because when they move into that sales leadership role or a leadership role, they're starting over at the bottom of the S-curve. Yeah. And, and where what is going to make them successful moving forward is not what has made them successful in the past. And that in and of itself is a mindset. We've got to reframe. There's a, a great book uh, written by Liz Wiseman that's called Rookie Smarts. And it's all about that no matter how much experience we have, we need to act like a rookie in terms of absorbing information, learning, and growing. And our ability to do that is truly founded on our mindsets. Do we have a growth mindset? Do we have an open mindset? Do we have a promotion mindset? Are we, are we seeking after certain learning goals and then do we have an outward mindset and, and if we could change ourselves at our foundation then we could change our thinking our learning and our behavior and consequently our success and, and just one more question this has been on my mind for quite a while i learned about the other minds concept that, that's supposed to kick in around three to five where we can predict how other people are going to react to a situation where like you hide a piece of uh, their property, let's say they're, they leave the room, you hide their phone. You know, if you have the other minds, you know they're going to come back and be surprised that their phone's not there. Uh -huh. But in sales, that's what we have to do all the time. We have to anticipate how the other person's going to react. Yeah. Like it, a chess game, anticipate other moves. Yeah. And I think one of the things you're getting at is the idea is when we're a little bit younger in a position or, or in our career, we are going to be more inclined to be in this self-protection mode, yeah. right? So Always. we're <laughs> focused on me being successful. Once we feel like we're in a place of stability or if our organization or our leader can create a culture in which we feel more safe, then we feel the freedom to focus less on ourselves and more on advancing others okay. and advancing the organizations, which makes us a little bit more sensitive to others, more, more emotionally intelligent. And, and this, the reality is, is like there's some people mature through this process really naturally, but a large percentage of us, myself included, have a really difficult time doing so unless they have some sort of tools or learning that occurs that awakens them yeah. and spurs them into action. And so that's really why I wrote my book is, and I think that if you pick, were to pick up my book, you, you'll find that it may be the most or the deepest introspection that you ever do because you're starting to awaken to some of these things that you've never been conscious of but are truly influencing almost every aspect of your life. Cool. So let's talk about that. Where do people go to get the book, connect with you, and sign up for your assessment? Yeah, the best place is my website, uh, ryangottfordson.com. You'll see right away the, either the ability to, to purchase the book. You can get the ebook or audiobook now. In fact, if you buy the ebook right now, you can get the audiobook for free. And then also my mindset assessment is there. There's information about the digital mindset coach. So really what I want to do is I want to help people uh, transform and unlock greater success as easy as possible. And I think that these tools are pretty easy. It's the mindset assessment is 20 questions. The, the digital mindset coach is about 10 minutes a day. Um, and, and then the book is we're trying to make it easy for people to digest like an audio book format. So hopefully folks will find it easy to, to take in this information and, and at the end of the day, transform themselves to unlock greater success.